dip it in that and again give it a stir to remove those stains. So now I will just take it out, squeeze access, take the tissue, damp it and you can see those stains have also gone and it is a completely new fabric here as compared. Nice and smelling also, not like the oil like before. This is the sample, this is the test that can be done to test for your oil and to remove the stain. Now let us come to our fourth stain and that is to remove a nail paint. Here I have got a sample of nail paint. So for a nail paint what you are supposed to do is that scrape out any access. Try to use your nail or a scraper and take out anything that is in access there which is on just lying on the top surface. Okay. After that you can use a methylated spirit, acetone or kerosene onto it in order to remove it. So I will be taking the sample, putting it here. I will be adding my uh, kerosene in this case into it and soaking it. You have to soak it. Without soaking it, it won't work. And then give it a stir. Keep stirring it and if for an old stain, this procedure has to be repeated about 5 to 6 times because nail polish stains are very hard stains and they won't be removed so easily. So I will just squeeze out the axis and use my tissue to damp it. Okay, The stain has not completely gone but still there is some stains at the middle. As I told you the steps has to be repeated again and again. But as compared to our original fabric, too much difference can be seen mm. in here. Mm. This is the procedure for removing your nail paints or any type of paints from your fabric. Mm -hmm. Now we will come to our final part that is to remove a stain from an inked fabric which has been kept for two days. For our final stain removal technique that is to use our inked fabric to remove its stain for the past which has been kept for the past two days I would require in this case three containers. The first container in which you will put the fabric and into it you will soak it into the buttermilk. I am using my buttermilk here. Soak it inside your buttermilk. Soak it about for about 10-15 minutes inside. Okay. Once it is soaked inside the buttermilk, you need to take it and add it into the lime juice and salt in there. So I am having my lime juice in the second container. I feel it's getting soaked. I will prepare it. Add lime juice into the container. Okay. I am not going to use by all but I will be using this little. Okay. And then into it you can add your salt. And give it a stir. This is the solution of salt and lime juice. In a third container I will be having my soap mixture or soap powder with hot water or normal water. After just giving a turn you can see the color of the buttermilk has changed into bluish type. Now the stain has not completely gone so I will squeeze it and put it into my second mixture of lemon juice and salt water. Soak it into that also. Again, I'll be using my stirrer and removing. If it is a white fabric or a cotton fabric and still the stain of the ink has not gone, you need to soak it. You can see the stain has still not gone but it has lightened a bit. So squeeze it and put it in your soap water. After you put it in the soap water, give a vigorous shake. Now we'll just remove the fabric out full of face. Squeeze it and we can see the fabric. I'm doing it the first time so I don't know and you can see the ink has completely disappeared but again the stain of your washing powder is left behind. That can be used again to wash it in the normal water. So let me just see where I can put it into my normal water and give it a wash. This was into the lemon juice because I am not having access to water. But you can see the ink has been lightened. 
in bit. So if it is a white fabric or it is a colored fabric, what you can do is, the final step is, as for your book, to bleach it. So when you bleach it once, it will be completely disappeared. This is the case for the 5 stain removal method that can be used when you are having your 5 stains here and what are the chemicals used for this. What are you going to do for a rapid, for an immediate stain effect that we are going to see right now. So dear students, right now for our next practical that is the immediate stain, it is quite very easy. So I already have my soap and water solution here. No matter the soap, the water has to be hot or cold, it can be used any. So for any stain that has been done freshly such as tea, coffee or milk, egg or ink except for nail paint. The four stains that is tea, coffee, milk and egg and oil including ink. The four stains can be easily done using just soap and water for immediate stain. So let me show you how to stain it. For example, I have got my fabric and I am staining it right now with an ink. This is the ink. Freshly ink, put it in the soap water. Quickly stir. The soap contains enzymes that will dissolve the stain. Now I have just taken it off. I am just rubbing it like that quick. Because this needs to be done for immediate stain of an ink. Soap and water and you can see the stain has gone. Only I we are having here is the stain of the washing powder which needs to put in again clean water to remove it a final wash. This is the process that will be done using for your ink. Let us stain our second sample that is our oil. For our oil, I will just take my sample and the oil, dip it into it, hot water and soap. Hot water and soap and it will be clean. This is your oil sample. Again, the same procedure. Hot water and soap. Stir it. Quick stirring. And then take off the sample nice and good smell of the soap is there inside and it has been washed completely no stain of the oil is also there the same procedure can be used for oil at the same time soap and water third one is your milk or egg sample again cold water and soap let us take that this is the sample i'm using for my fabric sample where i'm going to put the egg inside that let us say this is the egg sample okay same method, put it inside, stir. Second one, let me take a sample and apply my milk into it. Milk sample again. So I will put it here. Together we can wash, no problem. Some rubbing and squeezing needs to be done at the same time. And since I am using the same washing powder again, you can increase the washing powder concentration inside it. See, the stain has gone for the egg and for the milk and it is completely new. Again, final wash is required into the new water after squeezing it so that the soap stains can go away. Now our final one that is tea and coffee, same method will be used again. I am having here my tea. Let me soak my this one into the tea. And you can see the tea effect here. Again soap and water. I am having my coffee here. Same method again. Soak it into the coffee. A coffee fell which is something like this for a coffee and again into the sample. And then you can either stir it with your hand or with a stirrer. Quick shake. Take it out. Squeeze axis. Final wash again required to remove the washing powder stain and you can see no more stain of the tea, clean fabric, same way with the coffee, no more stain. So, same methods can be used for your tea and coffee. One final method which I want to show you is my nail polish method. 
The nail polish method is something which will not work like that. It, the same procedure has to be involved. The difference between old and fresh stain is the fresh stain needs to be repeated the step one time or two times while the old stains of the nail polish the same steps will be used but repeated for five to six times. That is put it in a kerosene or you can put it into your acetone or methylated spirit. Quickly just let me stain it like that and apply it in my kerosene. Repeat the steps. Just squeeze it, little bit of rubbing. Still there are some marks of the stain, not completely gone, but at least better than what we had in our original stain cloth here. Okay? So, this is the staining removal method. Now let us come to the related question area. So dear students, as you have seen how the practical was carried out and what is the procedure involved in removing the stain removal technique. Now it is the time for the questions. You are in your book, the questions have not been mentioned, but the possible types of questions that you might be asked are number one, explain the different types of procedures involved in removing the different types of stains. You have already known the names of the stains such as blood, milk, ink, nail polish, oil, tea, etc. So you know these uh, stains. How to, how to explain the full procedure including the agents that you are going to use in order to remove these stains. Question number two is to list out, maybe they will tell you five or ten different types of chemical agents that are used in the process of stain removal for removing the stain. These are the two possible types of questions that might be asked to you for the, after the practicals has been carried out. Any other questions that you people have got, please let me know in the comment box below. Thanks for watching the video.